I welcome you all to today's webinar organized by Informa Connect Academy, uh, which is Mastering Operational Excellence, Continuous Improvement for All Managers. And this will be done by our very esteemed trainer who has been with Informa for more than 20 years, uh, Mr. Alan Power. So Alan Power is a training and development expert who has been, who has over 50 years of experience he has transitioned from the computer industry in the UK banking sector, where he has senior positions in HR training operations and quality management. Also as a head of, head of HR at Mortgage Express in 1988, Alan implemented quality management methodologies, later becoming general manager at PSB Home Loans, who won the Quality Scotland Award for Business Excellence in 1996. In 2003, he founded his consultancy, delivering nearly 300 learning events in quality management, operations excellence, service excellence, strategy management, the balance scorecard, course and leadership. Alan also holds certifications in counseling, coaching, training management, and a postgraduate diploma in quality management. He's also an accredited action-centered leadership trainer and fellow of the Chartered Institute of Management. A highlight of his career was creating a mortgage processing company based on Lean and Six Sigma. And Alan has, uh, is used to delivering uh, remote uh, courses and delivery systems since 2007. So over to you, Alan, as of now for today's webinar. Hello, everybody. Um, as Manali said, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you for that introduction, Manali. Um, I'm going to spend the next 30 minutes or thereabouts talking to you about operations management um, sometimes we call it operational excellence. And the first thing I want to tell you about, a little bit about, is me. Um, although Manali gave me uh, an introduction, it's important that um, I mention to you that I, as she said, we, um, I became the general manager of a mortgage company in the United Kingdom some years ago now, but I was appointed uh, to that role, largely because I was one of the very first people in the UK to start using what we nowadays call Lean and Six Sigma. It wasn't something that um, was popular. It was things were happening in Japan and things were happening in the United States, but in the UK we were, were a little bit behind it. But anyway, I managed to um, get this role to set up and become the general manager of the mortgage company. And we delivered some quite spectacular results, including a 98% customer satisfaction, 127% improvement in productivity, and 97% employee satisfaction. I, I don't want to spend all the time talking about me because we don't have a lot of time. Uh, as you can see, the timings here um, on this slide, we've got 30 minutes for me to talk to you. And then at the end of that 30 minutes, I'll hand over to you. If you wish, you can ask some questions. So the questions will be at the end. Um, I Also, I want to tell you something about the objectives of the, uh, of the webinar. Um, although I don't want to get into to detail about the objectives of the course at this stage, but certainly most certainly the objective of the webinar for me is uh, quite obviously it's a sales pitch to try and convince you to attend this course personally, this operational excellent course personally, or to maybe send some of your employees if you're working in HR or, um, uh, or uh, L&D. So I'll tell you some, a little bit about the course, but I, similarly, I don't want to spend a lot of time giving you information that you can read. But there are a series of objectives that I try to achieve in the course, and I'm going to actually run through a, a number of the key elements of the course during this 30 minutes. Um, I can tell you about the, the, the format of the course and who it's for and, and why you should attend. But in actual fact, if you look at the top right-hand corner, you'll see there's a website, www.alanempower.com is my personal website. And if you go onto that website and scroll through it, you'll find uh, courses. Uh, if you scroll down the courses drop down, you'll come across um, operations management. And if you enter the site at operations management, 
the first document you will see is the course outline <clears throat> where you can actually read the detail of the objectives um, who should attend uh, and um, why you should attend as well as actually yeah, sort of a, a run through an outline of the topics that are covered during the four days so I think that would be probably a, uh, a better use of your time and give me the time to tell you some of the highlights of the program. So <clears throat> this is what I'm going to just briefly talk about, the function of operations. Um, sorry, let me just say, this is what's in the course. We start off with the func fun functions of operations. We move into the strategic role we talk about improvement, operational improvement, and then I illustrate what we've been talking about with a case study, a manufacturing case study. Uh, that leads into spending several hours, usually most of a day, on lean. Um, lean, uh, you probably are aware, is lean manufacturing, lean thinking, or you know whatever title it goes by. But what I'm, I've got plus, plus, plus there as well, because there are things um, within the family of uh, lean manufacturing that I can introduce you to. And I'll, in the course, we talk about three methodologies that are part of the lean family of methodologies. I uh, also want to show you a service sector case study. Um, that's the one that I had um, as the, the company I set up and I ran. I used what you would call today Lean and Six Sigma methodologies myself. And I'm going to show you when you attend the course um, what those uh, approaches look like. I'll also explain to you some of the process improvement tools, what, how you can use them, how I use them and so on. And then finally, towards the end of the course, we deal with um, job design and workplace design. So what, I, what I'm intending to do is just go through each one of those headings there, one at a time, and explain what is it that's on the course as far as that particular topic is concerned. So the first thing we're going to talk about is, on the course, is the function of operations. As we do throughout the course, we, we do exercises. Now, people who come on this particular course have um, mostly have some experience of operations managers. There are occasionally people who have no experience, but it's we often start with a little bit of an exercise where we debate what it is that they understand to be the function of operations. And then we start distilling some of their thoughts and ideas into um, a definition. And the definition we use is to produce and deliver products and services to fulfill a customer need. And to do that, uh, use the word economically, but essentially to do it at its lowest cost and to make the best return in terms of maybe profit. And how do we do it? By planning, organizing, controlling, and mobilizing resources. We then think about operations management um, more widely. Because if you think about operations management, you'll realize that we encounter operations management every minute, every second of every day, uh, because all you have to do is look around uh, at something in your eye line and ask yourself the question, where did that come from? If it's not something out of nature, if it's something human, human made, then it comes from an operation uh, so operations management, you know, touches our uh, our lives um, all the time on a continuous basis. And so, I, to illustrate the point, I show some images of operations. And here is one: a back office um, in a, a back office in a bank. Here is one that is probably what most people uh, relate to when they think about operations management. It's a factory. This one is a factory making furniture. Uh, this one is uh, a fast food takeaway. And this one is a retail shop. Uh, and this one is a hospital. And finally, we've got an oil rig. And I'm not suggesting that is 
covering every aspect of operations managers. It most certainly isn't. Uh, you know, the, I could probably put a hundred slides up and still not do it justice. But what I would uh, be able to claim, I think, with confidence, that if you <clears throat> work in a, an organization doing things for customers, no matter what it is you're doing, and no matter whether it's internal or external customers, you work in an operation. So when we talk about who it's for. The answer is anybody who works in an operation. And that would include people who work in um, support functions. So if you think about the human resources department, yeah, they do things like recruitment and training. That is, or both of those are operations. If you think about a finance department, well, they process invoices and produce reports for distribution around the organization's management team. That's an operation. <clears throat> um, same with the marketing department, and uh, same with the IT department. All of them have a specialist level of knowledge, but all of them also run an operation. Um, and the, the one thing that they have in common and you've probably heard this many, many times before, all work is a process. All work is a process. So all of those functions and all of those operations that I illustrated to you are all organizations that actually manage processes. So that's what they have in common. Yeah, if you work with processes, then you have an operation. We move from what is the function and the role of operations management to maybe think a bit wider and a bit more long term. And although I confess that most of the delegates on my courses don't have um, a lot of involvement in the strategic role, some of them do, but not many. <clears throat> and I think it's often because they've not been invited to participate in strategic or strategy development. And I impress upon them the importance of understanding strategy in their own organization, <clears throat> because if you understand strategy, you can align the operations function to that strategy. And there's a couple of um, models that I actually, um, I, illust I use to illustrate that. You, you may have come across this, it's a very famous, a four box model, Porter's generic strategies. If you don't know Michael Porter, he, uh, Harvard University, uh, probably he's, he's been a guru in, in strategy management for as long as I can remember. <clears throat> but um, Michael Porter produced this four box model uh, and suggested that <clears throat> there's only two strategies you can adopt in organizations. <clears throat> Excuse me. One is cost leadership and the other one is differentiation. You try and be the cheapest or you try to make yourself different. And we explore those two phenomena and we use examples, case studies to show the differences. And we talk about the delegates own companies and we explore where they would fit in in terms of cost leadership or differentiation. Now, I said there's four boxes and I'm only mentioning two. Well. The two at the bottom, cost focus and differentiation focus, are the same, essentially. Um, the two at the top are broad, so they're in sort of mass market, whereas the two at the bottom are maybe in a narrow marketplace. So a good example would be cost leadership, supermarket, differentiation. It could be a delicatessen. Uh, they're both in the uh, retail business. Uh, one of them has got a you know wide presence, big, uh, high volume, uh, small margins. Differentiation is the opposite. Yeah, town center, um, small shop, uh, highly specialized products for which they can charge a premium. <clears throat> and knowing which one your organization is will inform your operations strategy, the sort of people you need, the sort of premises you need, and so on. So we discussed that as well, <clears throat> but we also talk about the future. 
because not only do you need to know what strategy you're pursuing today, <clears throat> what you also need to understand as an operations manager is what the strategy will be for the future. And here this Ansoft matrix is talking about um, markets and products. So top left-hand corner, um, we talk about market penetration. That's using the present products in the present market. Um, and we talk about, I won't go into the detail, the other three opportunities. Uh, as you can see, um, market penetration, selling the same product in the same market is going to be very, very low risk. Uh, to contrast that with the bottom right-hand corner, which is diversification, where you're going to try and market new products in new markets. And I yeah, that's at the opposite end. That's high risk. <clears throat> so we talk about the different approaches. Uh, we talk about the delegates' uh, situation and whether they are aware of what their long-term strategy is in their organization. Um, we explore what to do if they do know and we explore what to do if they haven't been told. <clears throat> we also spend some time on what I might call future proofing. We talk about the importance of managers, operations managers, understanding um, the environment within which they operate. So this is another Porter model. Uh, you can see it's another, <clears throat> looks like another four books model. It's actually a five box because the one in the center, the circle in the center is one of the components. But as you can see, it's looking at the situation where you could be under threat from something outside your organization. Uh, on the left-hand side, the bargaining power of suppliers. So for example, <clears throat> if you have uh, very few suppliers and the supplies are, are scarce that becomes a risk for you if you um if there are new entrants organizations coming in to your marketplace um trying to present their products to your customers in your market that could be a threat bargaining power of customers in the bottom right hand corner so if you've got very few customers if you're an organization with a with few customers <clears throat> they can um hold out for maybe a discount on your fees if it's if you've got hundreds of thousands of customers like supermarkets do the the bargaining power of customers is is really quite limited on the left hand side at the bottom we talk about the possibility of getting um a, 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 an organization coming into your marketplace with a product that's the same or similar to yours um and that's the threat of uh, substitute products now, talking about future proofing, what I impress upon operations managers is that they need to have their ear to the ground. <laughs> if somebody comes into um, a new entrant comes into their um, into their marketplace, if it comes in and it's a surprise to an operations manager, in my view, they failed. All those things that those four threats there, you as an operations manager need to be sensitive to, and whenever there's any action that could threaten you uh, takes place, then you're prepared for it. Let me discuss about how to prepare for it. <clears throat> then we have um, a session on operations improvement. This is a big subject um, because, you know, in, in an, <clears throat> an operation, the there is a need to, to continue to think about how to do what you're doing better tomorrow than you're doing it today. <clears throat> so we look at some of the methodologies that um, relate to operations improvements. And the first thing we introduce is the concept of waste. You may have come across the Toyota production system. Uh, and in Toyota, so a few decades ago now, they identified what they call the seven classic wastes. So we explore the seven classic wastes and uh, we talk about <clears throat> the waste of unnecessary transportation, the waste of unnecessary inventory, the waste of unnecessary motion, et cetera, et cetera. We talk about these, but we actually talk about them um, on the back of a case study. So we, uh, I present the delegates 
with a model. Um, we can simulate a model operation. And then what we try to do is identify were there are actions that could be described as unnecessary, <clears throat> unnecessary using that list. And then think in terms of how we could reduce or remove unnecessary actions. Now, they're the seven classic ways, and that's what we focus on initially. But we go into consider some of the ways that are now on our agenda, which maybe were not on the agenda in uh, the times when Toyota came up with the seven classic wastes. But we are obviously a lot more aware of things like pollution, <clears throat> and trying to save the planet, et cetera, and how that causes waste, a waste of uh, time, waste of money, et cetera. <clears throat> uh, look at um, waste of energy, you know, leaving lights on in rooms when there's nobody there. Uh, waste of natural resources we're talking about fresh water uh, we're also talking about wild animals and uh, uh, and uh, flora and fauna so both flora and fauna uh, fish in the sea and mammals in the sea and so on um, and how you know, extinction is uh, making the place a poorer the planet a poorer place look at the waste of talent um, <clears throat> and how we can exploit talent more than we're doing so at the moment, and finally, a waste of checking. Uh, if you have a regime in an organization where people are checking each other's work, then that's a waste. It should be done right first time, and the need for checking uh, would then be obviated. It's then we went in, we go into a case study um, <clears throat> to look at operating systems in an organization, and it may not surprise you that the case study I use is the Toyota production system. Um, all those words on that little three-pillared house with a, um, a foundation or two foundations and a roof are featured in the, in the program. So we talk about, the, the, if you look at the base, we talk about high junker, uh, the left. High junker is how to balance a line. So... We can maintain flow um, without producing inventory or without having people uh, to wait. Uh, we look at standard work, standard operating procedures, you probably know I, as the total, total productive maintenance and the value chain, and step up into operational stability and how we can create that, look at some examples of it. Then we've got three pillars just in time and just in time, you probably know about just in time, you've probably heard about it. But within the toolbox, the just in time toolbox, uh, we look at um, tack time, one piece flow and pull systems, all of which are components of an efficient operating system. And we use examples of them. We have exercises and, and case studies. On the right hand side, we have Jadoka. Jadoka is the merging of people with machines uh, we look at different aspects of the um, the toolbox in Chidoka again with examples and then finally the pillar in the middle which is the culture of continuous improvement we look at some of the things that organizations do that as far as I'm concerned get in the way um, we need to confront a culture we don't have a culture of continuous improvement well we need to make sure we do have one so we spend some time looking at the potential issues and how they can be addressed. So then we look at lean with the three pluses. Um, lean essentially uh, is the Toyota production system. The Toyota production system was studied by some academics and they identified components of the um, Toyota production system and they specified um, a number of steps that they call the five principles of lean. Uh, you can see them here, specify value, map a value stream, create flow, establish pull, and strive for perfection. So we take each one of those in turn, <clears throat> um, and they feature as a topic on the training program. Um, we use examples, um, and we, we actually 
create some of the tools. So in number two here, map the value stream, we actually do some value stream mapping. There are some exercises where people have a go at doing using some mapping tools. Not that I want to make them uh, process engineers. I just want the delegates on the course to see the power of some of these tools uh, with maybe uh, the thought that they could send some of their employees um, on the program so they could learn some of these tools. And then we look at the service sector case study. And as I've already mentioned, this is um, the company that I set up. This is where we were housed in Glasgow, west of Scotland. Uh, I encountered, as Manali said, Six Sigma, Lean and Six Sigma in 1986, 87. Uh, I used my knowledge of th those components um, to set this company up. Uh, and then ran it for seven years, and then I was given a head of head office role, which was about spreading the word, if you like. I became head of quality strategy and policy. Um, but as you can see here on this slide, we were early adopters of Lean Six Sigma, and we were probably the first in the UK to use both of those. Uh, we were probably the first in the UK to use the Barnes Scorecard as well. And we won some awards. The big award was the winner of the Quality Scotland um, Award for Business Excellence. Now, when we're talking about this particular case study, although we applied lean, most of my focus would be on Six Sigma. The important tools in Six Sigma were used to set up that program, to set up that uh, company and to manage that program. Uh, you've probably heard of Six Sigma, and if you have, then you've come across Demaic. So what we will do is look through each of those steps in the DMAIC process, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control, and illustrate what needs to be done at each step with the case study. That leads nicely into the area of um, process improvement tools, <clears throat> because the things that we're going to do um, to improve processes is analyze what we're doing, maybe using process maps, and use a number of methodologies like Lean and Six Sigma to isolate parts of the business that we need to improve. And it's process improvement tools that we use to make those improvements. So here's a number of tools that we illustrate. Uh, you might have come across the Ishikawa. You might have known it as the fishbone diagram. Uh, we do scattered diagrams. Uh, we do a five whys. Uh, and the one that popped up too quickly there was we use control charts. Now, the control chart is not easy to see. So what I've done is I've given you a, a, a bigger chart here. And during the course, delegates learn how to construct this chart. This is the most popular chart um, that's used in Six Sigma and in Lean as well. Most operations I come across use these charts. These charts are um, quality control charts that um, monitor the performance of a process to identify where, uh, why, and how the process might go wrong. Uh, powerful tool, extremely powerful tool. And most people I know um, actually uh, have gone back to their workplace, having been on a course, and then have um, used those charts. We then do um, spend a bit of time on job design um, and workplace place design. We have a series of objectives here about improving uh, job design. And we, we look at a particular model. Um, and we use this in a, in a case study. <clears throat> And this model helps us to um, design jobs that are motivational. <clears throat> so at the bottom, there's a formula. Um, you can see it says MPS, how you calculate MPS. MPS stands for uh, the mo motivational performance um, <clears throat> score. So you produce a score. There's a scoring mechanism that you'll get a handout on, and you'll be able to score your job descriptions back um, at your workplace. And then 
we do some work on workplace design and our operations environment. So this one here is the design for physical health and safety. We look at different aspects of it and how we can improve them and also design for mental health. We spend some time on each one of those and discuss what um, what causes a problem and what could be done to improve the situation. And then finally, we spend some time talking in more detail about the human side of operations management. We talk about people, what motivates people, and more importantly than what motivates people, we also talk about potentially demotivators. There are things that motivate and the things that demotivate, and we need to understand the difference between the two and how, as an operations manager, we exploit our knowledge of that to um, to get high le higher levels of performance from people. And it is my view that we need a bit of a brain reboot. Um, there's lots and lots of things, I believe, that go on in organizations that we need to question, challenge, and maybe think in terms of doing things differently. <clears throat> we explore them. We explore um, what needs to be done and essentially how we can do it. And that's typically where we finish the program. I like to finish there because we we show them a we show them like a short video and the video leaves a message which i think is a an excellent message which essentially is you know go go out there and make a difference that's a good way to um to finish the program okay so that's me short description of a what is a pretty um content rich four day program lots of activities exercises case studies a couple of simulations and so on are contained in the program and it's typically well received by delegates. Um, I'm now going to give you an opportunity to ask some questions. Um, so I'm going to throw open the um, um, oh somebody sure. thank you Alan. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, please can I request to put that in the QA box or the chat box that we have. So we have such an overwhelming response for today's uh, webinar, Alan, and uh, the turnout is really good. So I'm glad. So. Okay. Let's give our delegates a couple of minutes so that they can type in the questions. Uh, Alan. Okay, any certificate will issue for this. So Akil, this is a, a webinar. Uh, so we do not have any certificates for the webinar. However, if you join the course, as you can see, what Alan has dis, uh, displayed on the screen. So we have a course coming up from 9th to 12th of October. Yeah, we do. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, then, you know, you'll be able to get. Yeah, there's... Um... 12th, yeah, 12th, 9th to 12th of October. And there are the contacts for you. I've just noticed yeah. a message from somebody saying that you could see <clears throat> my slides in presenter view. Is that right? Sorry, come again. Oh, yes, it? yes. I've got the wrong date on here. It's the 9th to 12th of December. My yeah. apologies. December. It's the 9th to 12th of December, not October. Is there any discount available for this course? What did the, yes, you will have a discount, uh, Akhil. Uh, if you have attended this webinar, you can let my, my team will get in touch with you. You can see the email ID that is mentioned over there. You will get a discount if you attend this course, certainly. Can we have the PPT? Yes, you will get the recording of this. You know, My team will send a thank you email. And with that, there will be a link to the mm -hmm. webinar. So you will get yeah, I've got a question, Mohammed. Uh, Shajil Nawaz, he's asking, can I join as an individual? Can you join the course as an individual? Yes, you can. <clears throat> the Somebody's asking about the cost of the course. There's a brochure that will give details of costs and discounts. Yes, we also have the, uh, it's also available on our website, Informa Connect Academy. And you can also get in touch with our sales team me inquiries at the rate informa.com so that's the email id and you can know about we can offer discounts and see what suits you best 
that somebody is asking, uh, oh yeah, can you share PowerPoint? Yes, we can. Um, somebody's asking one uh, one on one course available. Can we do a one on one course coaching session? Yes, we can. You just need to talk to our sales team and see if we can all organize that. Can I request that you? Please... Somebody's asking for a certificate. Do we do a webinar certificate? Uh, usually, uh, Akil, this webinar is like an insight into the upcoming course. So, you know, we will see if we can do that. Usually, we don't issue certificates for the webinars. But let me uh, just see if we can do something about it. Yeah. Okay. Somebody is, uh, Jazzy is asking a question uh, about uh, case studies and real examples on the course. Yes. This is not an, acad a, an academic course. This is a practical course given by somebody, me, who was... Uh, a long time trainer uh, and um, also has you know, several decades of experience in operations management. So the course is full of um, the sort of things you would expect from a professional trainer. Okay. Could you please brief one detailed manufacturing case study? Yes, <clears throat> it's the one I mentioned. It's the Toyota production system the company Toyota in Japan and around the world, once upon a time, the biggest manufacturing um, car manufacturers in the world. Uh, I'm in India. Can I attend this virtually? Yes, we do have yes. an option to attend virtually. Uh, can I use my company as a practical example so I can? Yes, indeed. Yes, we, we do that. During the course, delegates talk about their own uh, in company challenges so we we discuss them uh and not only do we discuss them during the session when when we leave the final day of the course you're going to leave with my website address and in my webs on my website there's all the material that we use all the slides all the case studies all the exercises will be available to you for a year um, after you've attended the course and i will be at the end of a phone or the end of a a video presentation for any support that you want. Okay. Certification will issue from Informa. Yes, Avad, you will have uh, the certification from Informa Academy. And also this course has CPD points. So you will be getting a CPD points by attending this course. Okay, somebody's asking, uh, oh, it's gone. Um, let me just scroll up. Uh, would the example apply to small and average manufacturing plants? Absolutely. Yeah. Doesn't matter how small or how big you are. Uh, there's somebody here, Mohammed, uh, worked for Toyota in Pakistan. Okay. So you'll know some of the stuff because um, you'll have probably done it. Somebody's saying, uh, can I use... oh no, I've, I've read that one out. Let me just keep going down. Yeah, you get you get certificates from Informa Academy. Uh, you will also get certificates called a CPD, Continued Professional Development Certificate, by attending this course. Uh, and you'll also get um, digital certificates, which you can post onto your uh, social media. Yeah, you will get twenty four CPD points, Avad. Okay. Yeah, CPD points thirty twenty four. CBD points. Yeah. Uh, will this course to lead to a possible job role in any of the companies in Dubai? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm, so, I'm sorry. We are. We're not a recruitment company, but no doubt, if you've got the skills uh, and experience of running an operation, there are plenty of opportunities in Dubai. It's a stunning place to live and work. Somebody it's telling... a four-day course. It's a four-day course. Four day. Of course, yeah. How many CD points? Somebody's saying 24. How different this training from Lean Six Sigma? <clears throat> the different, the big difference is it's shorter. Um, if you do Lean or Six Sigma training, it's very general. Uh, lean training would maybe minimum of a week. Uh if you want to do green belt, Six Sigma, typically a minimum of eight days. If you want to do uh, black belt, Six Sigma, it's another 10 days. What we are focusing on are the uh, tools and techniques, the methodologies 
that you need in your business. So in my operation, I didn't need all of the tools. I just needed some of them. Uh, and so I include the popular ones that you can use as soon as you get back. Um, So all the delegates, if you're asking about the details of the course, like how many days it is, you know, um, how many points do you get? What is the cost of the course? If you can attend F2F or virtually, uh, please go to our website, uh, Informa Connect Academy, and you have the details of all the uh, options that you have for attending this course. And also you can write us, write to us at meenquiries at the rate informa.com. Uh, Alan, can I request you to go back to that slide where you have the, uh, you know, the phone number and the, uh -oh. Yeah, so so you can use this number, ME inquiries at the rate informa.com. And also you can use this WhatsApp number and my team will get in touch with you. Okay. Okay, someone's asking a question. One of the lean principles is established pull. Does it mean that we need to make sure value realization or something else? I'm not 100% certain what the question is, but let me see if I can answer it. Uh, pull, let me say, is the opposite to push. In many organizations, we do thing called we do thing called I think called batch processing. We do some pass it to the uh, the the person downstream in the process, whether they're ready for it or not. The pull system is the other way around. The person downstream takes from a person upstream when they're ready to do the work. So there's less pressure coming from upstream to the downstream people. Uh, in Toyota, they call it Kanban. In Kanban is a card, and it sends a signal in a card upstream saying, make some more process. I'm ready for you to do some work. <clears throat> Four days is weekdays. It's Monday to Thursday. Okay. The, the, somebody's asking for the brochure. It's on the website. It's easy to access. Uh, so my colleague Isha has just dropped a link over there uh, for all the delegates. You can follow that link and you can access all the information over there. Certificate in operations management. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It says operational manager also needed some financial expertise. I didn't see that in this presentation. Is that included in this or other courses? It's definitely not included in this course. Uh, it's a, as, as I mentioned, it's very content rich. There's a lot of material to cover in four days. Uh, if you want to um, um, get some financial training, then we run, in former run, lots of different uh, training programs in, um, in in the finance function, and you're bound to find something there for you. Okay. So it also says to prepare CapEx, OpEx, value streaming. Okay. Capital expenditure, operational expenditure, um, I think we all understand what that means. Uh, value streaming, I'm not sure what's meant by that, unless what's meant is that we do things, I would do a thing called a value stream mapping, which is to identify where, um, where, where, where value is created and where value is destroyed. Uh, <clears throat> okay, let me just keep scrolling down, see anything else. Yeah, okay. Uh, this um, Aliab Albergio um, <clears throat> about optimizing production services via enabling remote collaboration, etc. <clears throat> when we look at um, operational strategy on, on our first day, we also um, explore the elements of, um, of Industry 4.0. So we're looking at new technologies, okay, you know, including things like drone technology, AI, <clears throat> 3D printing, and things like that uh, to see whether uh, or to see what impact they're having on uh, organizations and how we can exploit the, um, the benefits that um, uh, new methodologies are um, making available to us. Okay, but now we're at 12.45 in my time in the United Kingdom, so I think we've probably come to the end. I can't see any more. Questions coming?
So I think that's all that we have now, Alan. Yeah. So thank you, Alan, for again running this webinar to me uh, today. It was really nice to give okay. people insights of the delegates and seems like they're really interested. So and yeah. we have sent them the link. So thank you again, delegates, for joining this uh, webinar and hope to see you for the course. Thank uh, you. I thank also, you once again. Yeah, tell can, I also, can I also say thank you to everybody for attending. I uh, hope to see you in December. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What if you and your team can be even more? Even more informed, competitive, accomplished, even more successful. With programs designed to inspire and empower everyone to become even more. Introducing Informa Connect Academy. With hundreds of global, digital, and in-person training courses led by world-renowned industry experts. Reimagining learning experiences for even more unlocked potential. InformaConnect Academy, available at informaconnect.com slash academy.